years ago, we couldn't imagine how the internet would change our lives. The internet wasn't even created yet. Now, we can't imagine our lives without it. Similarly, we can't imagine using super powerful quantum computers in our day to day. Yet in 20 years, this may become our reality. Without delving deep into any physics, seeing as we only have a couple of minutes, I'm going to explain to you how quantum computers work, just in terms of qubits and superposition. As you might have heard in your computer science lessons, every mobile phone, every computer only uses bits. Now, bits only have two values, zero for off and one for on. Sounds simple enough, right? Quantum computers are a whole new idea by using qubits instead of bits. Qubits can be zero, one, and anything in between at the same time. Or in other words, they can be on and off at the same time. Hard to imagine, right? This works because qubits are in the superposition. The superposition means that a physical object is in two different states at once. For example, an electron in the superposition could be spinning in opposite directions at once. This allows quantum computers to work on one million computations, while your traditional computer works on just one. This isn't just a new iPhone you might find at an Apple store. Sorry, Apple. This really is a whole new idea. OK, now that we roughly know how that works, how are these useful to us? The fascinating thing is, with quantum computers, we can solve problems that are currently simply unsolvable. Modeling organisms is a good example. I'm no expert in biology, but I do know that living things are too complex to model because they constantly change unpredictably. Imagine being able to model how cancer attacks cells and then be able to make drugs countering this. This is exactly what quantum computers will allow us to do. Currently, it would take billions of years without exaggeration to compute even the simplest organism. But with quantum computing, we could model it in just a few days. This is just one example, but there are many more in areas like logistics, finance and climate research. I promise that every single one of you will benefit from a quantum computer in your future. OK, now seems like a good time for a bit of a reality check. While quantum computers are really fascinating, there are three key limitations. Number one, we already know that quantum computers work because they already exist today. So the question is not, will it work? The question is, will they scale? By scale, I mean whether we can collect enough qubits that are in a happy and stable relationship with the superposition to solve useful calculations. We need around 1 million qubits to be able to allow quantum computers to reach their full potential. However, we can currently only make quantum computers without 220 qubits, so we still have a long way to go with this problem. Number two, we need very specific conditions so that the qubits don't return to just being a zero or just being a one, while we want it to be in the superposition. It needs to be super cold, super clean and super quiet. Or in other words, we need a magnetic vacuum with temperatures of minus 273 degrees Celsius and definitely no noisy children running about to allow quantum computers to reach this full potential. And this is all for a chip about the size of your fingernail. Companies are working on this, but there is no solution for this problem just yet. Number three, quantum computers can't land on just one final answer. But this is easy to fix if we get quantum computers and traditional computers to collaborate. Basically, quantum computers can narrow down the vast majority of options to just a few. And then traditional computers can narrow down these last few options to just one. OK, so where are we at today? Many worldwide governments, including the US, China and the UK, have started to invest heavily in quantum computing. For example, the US government has stated that it is vital for its national security and economic prosperity to invest. So what has this investment led to so far? There are two leading quantum computers today, one from Google and one from China. Let's start with the one from Google. 
Up until recently, this was the fastest quantum computer in the world. Google already offers access to this quantum computer via the cloud to companies and researchers. However, this computer only has 56 qubits, which is nowhere near the 1 million that we're after. The other is Zhuzhang 2 from China. This is the fastest quantum computer in the world currently, with 120 qubits, which isn't the 1 million that we need, but it's still over double as fast as the one from Google. To put this into a bit of context, the Juzang 2 can solve a task in two minutes that would take your traditional computer two million years. <laughs> it really goes from zero to 100, or more like two to two million, perhaps. <laughs> if this is what 120 qubits can do, just imagine what one million qubits will allow us to achieve. To summarize, quantum computers use qubits to solve large-scale computations in record time. While we haven't reached the full potential of these quantum computers yet, we can already see how they will allow us to solve currently unsolvable problems. Just like the first computer has defined our present, quantum computers will define our future. And as our school son declares, onwards we go. <laughs> Thank you.